Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to subtract mixed numbers with borrowing. And we have two examples that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. So let's jump into number one, where we have nine and one sixth minus five and a half. And the first thing that I like to do is set these problems up vertically, so up and down. We have nine and one sixth minus five and a half. So the fractions are lined up and the whole numbers are lined up. So can we subtract this problem as is? No, because the fractional part of these mixed numbers do not have common denominators. So we can't subtract. So we need to find a common denominator and rename. So the least common denominator for a 6 and a 2 is going to be 6. So let's rename with that common denominator. So 9 and how many sixths? Minus 5 and how many sixths? Well, 1 sixth, that already has a denominator of 6, so we don't need to rename. Now as far as 1 half, we know that 2 times 3 is 6, so we need to do the same thing to the top in order to keep this equivalent. 1 times 3 is 3. So now we have renamed fractions with that common denominator of 6, so we are able to subtract. But we have 1 sixth minus 3 sixths, so we can't do 1 minus 3, so we need to borrow. And just like when we borrow with whole numbers, we're going to borrow from the place to the left. So we're going to borrow from the whole number 9 there. So we need to take 1 from the 9, so it's now an 8. Now we need to add 1 to that 1 sixth, but we need to add one whole in fractional form. So what we're going to do, we are going to use the denominator of 6, because remember, we need common denominators when we add fractions, and we're going to put 6 over 6, because that equals one whole. And again, I picked 6 over 6 because this denominator is 6, and we need common denominators in order to add fractions. So now we have... 8 and 1 plus 6 is 7 over 6 minus 5 and 3 sixths. Now we're able to subtract. So 7 minus 3, that gives us 4 sixths. And the whole numbers now, 8 minus 5 is 3. So that's our answer. But always check to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. So we have 4 sixths, which we have a common factor between our numerator, the top number, and our denominator, the bottom number, 2. So we can divide both of those by 2 in order to simplify. So we end up with 3 and 2 thirds as our simplified final answer. So let's go on to number two, where we have eight and two thirds minus two and six sevenths. So let's line this up vertically, set it up vertically. Eight and two thirds minus two and six sevenths. So can we subtract that problem as is? Can we subtract those fractions? No, we need a common denominator. So the least common denominator for a three and a seven is going to be 21. So let's rename. We have 8 and how many 21sts? Minus 2 and how many 21sts? Well, we know that 3 times 7 is 21, so we need to do the same thing to the top in order to keep this equivalent. 2 times 7 is 14. We know 7 times 3 is 21, so we need to do the same thing to the top. 6 times 3 is 18. So we have 8 and 14 over 21 minus 2 and 18 over 21. So we are able to uh, move through the process here and go to subtract, but we can't subtract. We can't do 14 minus 18, so we need to borrow. So let's borrow from the 8 
and that's now going to be a 7. Let's add one whole here, and we're going to do it in fractional form. 21 over 21, right? We need that common denominator in order to add these fractions. And we get 7, 14 plus 21, that's going to give us 35 over 21, minus 2, and 18 over 21. So now we can subtract after we just borrowed there. So 35 minus 18, that's going to give us 17, 20 firsts, and our whole numbers, 7 minus 2, is 5. Always look to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. 17 and 21, the only common factor is 1, so it is in simplest form, and 5 and 17 21st is our final answer. So there you have it. There's how you subtract mixed numbers with borrowing. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.